All right, let's do some uh, LT spy simulations with a custom op amp. I'll show you how to do it. Uh, I can show you how to uh, create a custom model later, but for now, we just have it done already for you. You're welcome. All right, so homework six. It's actually homework uh, seven, but uh, well, well. Non inverting op amp, use an LM324-N, like we're going to do in the lab. Signal source uh, with a 10K, and this is a Thevenin equivalent uh, model, equivalent circuit. So we don't have control over the 10K, that's just what we get. We want an ideal gain of 40 dB. And uh, so here we go, we have LT Spice set up here. Save a little time. Here's our signal source. I'm going to put in 100 millivolts for fun. R3 is 10K. We're not going to change these. Uh, we wanted a gain of 100. 99K and 1K will do that for us. 1 plus R2 over R1. Uh, and these are not the values that you will be using for your homework problem. But uh, this is for example and fun anyway. Power supplies, we need these with our op amp models. Fit plus or minus 15, kind of a standard op amp power supplies, VCC and VEE, uh, kind of what we call them. Here's how we do the custom uh, custom models. So uh, linked here was we need to download uh, two files. The two files are VU op amp at ASY and VU ECE dot lib. These are on a website here, so I can update them. Uh, and periodically, as we add new models to the library, we'll add more uh, symbols and so on. So this is a static place that's uh, at least easy for me to update and should be easy for you to download. If you're watching this uh, years later, these, uh, this website may not be there. Well, I can almost guarantee you whiteaudio.com will be there, but maybe not this folder. And I'm sure it'll be running a new version of Apache in the, in the long time future. All right, so we downloaded those. Download here, VU ECE and VU op amp. This is Spice XML. I'll show you here in a second. ASC. Let's look at it. So VU ECE. Here we go. Hey, do you see how this is all colored in Notepad 2? Well, in Notepad 2, if you go to language and define your language, I have a custom language here, and you go to import. If we import spice.xml <coughs> and so on and save that as a name, that's the definitions we need for the uh, syntax coloring. You can do that on your own machine. You might be able to do that on the lab machines. I haven't tried. All right. So what this is, this comes from LT Spice's Universal Op Amp 2, specifically level 3A. And we're going to do this to match our hand calculations in 340 and 341. First off, was uh, we changed the definition of Rn to be the differential input resistance. Take these out that we showed earlier. Add in a resistor, a noiseless resistor, which uh, of course don't exist. Between pins 1 and 2, which are the uh, two inputs of the op amp. And there we go. That's how it's modeled. Pretty easy to do. We also added some current sources, one to model input bias current. Input bias current going into the pins from pin 1 to 0 and then from pin 2 to 0. That's the static version and the offset version is modeled as this. Half of it goes, uh, half of the difference goes here. If you take IB1 minus IB2, we get IOS. Remember, iOS is a random variable. Uh, should be a mean of zero, but it's never, and we don't know the sign. We have to take that into account when we do our simulations. IS is just a uh, power source or a uh, constant current source in between the power supplies that models our power supply current, just so we can. Uh, current from the power rails going to the output, that's where this SR, uh, SR, these S's are, these switches are, and that will draw current from the power supply if you can figure out the nodes, how they how they work. Added a few extra parameters down at the bottom, IB, IOS, and I supply, just defaults of zero, which is normally what we, uh, what we want. So to do that, we have, uh, we have these files in the same folder. We can make this into a library 
or this library so they don't have to be in the same folder but you need access to your system which is doesn't happen on the lab computers but if you're doing this at home you can put these in the uh, LT spices install directory and it won't touch them but uh, and they'll stay there for now we're going to use it in our current directory to get those we add a component and when it comes up we see this C program whatever that's the uh, system library it's not in here by the way although the universal op amp is that's not the one we want now we want the mm, better one all right so we'll go to the current directory up here the only symbol we have is VU op amp and we'll slap it down all right so I made some uh, custom keyboard shortcuts and there's a PDF up on uh, Blackboard about that. And, uh, there we go. Had it up earlier. All right, so this uh, website and the PDF, these are custom shortcuts. You can change custom shortcuts in LT Spice, and these are much better. The idea is you can hold the mouse with your right hand. All the keyboard shortcuts are operated with your left hand. You don't have to move them, uh, which is very much convenient, especially once they're memorized. Uh, print off the PDF or this website, and you'll go from there. Uh, to include these in here, it's a .ini file. And really, they're uh, down here. These, uh, these guys have the, or John at least, has the comment. And that's where to find it. Can do that on your own system you can do that on a lab computer but you have to call LT spice with it from the command line you can I can show you how to do that hey there it is there's the PDF LinkedIn blackboard all right so our op amp is here we need to power it though so custom shortcut VCC custom shortcut VE connect them up remember in spice if the nodes are named the same they are the same operating point let's run this hey look at this so 100 millivolts in gain of 100 or an ideal gain of 100 we should get 10 we don't this is not surprising because we have an open loop gain of 1 million I know that because that's the default for the uh, for this op amp for our VU op amp uh, the defaults are at zero for the all the offset and power supply currents and our in was still set to 500 mega ohms. Okay, well that's nice. Why don't we model the input bias current? Input bias current, well what do we do? Remember we're using the LM324-N. Let's put a bias current that's uh, what we're going to see in the lab. So here's our data sheet, linked in Blackboard, so on. Look at this, schematic diagram. PNP transistors are, uh, are at the input terminals. PNP, the base current, is going out of the base. So uh, on our model, it was set to be in. It's not in. We're going to put a negative bias current there. We want the number for it. This is not the one we want, the 324A. We want the 324-N, which is down here. Input bias current. Let's use the nominal instead of the maximum today because the nominal is about what we'll see in the lab and that's what we're doing Tuesday so 45 nanoamps but we really want minus 45 alright let's simulate again see what we get oh my goodness we're like 40 millivolts above what's up with that well that's the input bias current and we see here's our 45 nanoamps going into each of pins 1 and 2, which is exactly how we, uh, we were doing the model. Um, that Those currents are going in. If you remember how to do input bias current compensation, well, we have the impedance looking from uh, the input pins, the op amp looking out, to be equal. Well, the 10K we can't change, but if we look out from the minus input, we should see we see the parallel combination of R1 and R2. Make that parallel combination equal 10K, and we're done. We're not going to do it exactly right now. And you can't do it exactly uh, for the homework assignment because you're supposed to use 1% resistor uh, values, or the E96 series. So we'll do we'll do this. You still don't have a 99K resistor, but 
that's my video. All right, so we did bias current compensation. Do you see how we get our 9.999 almost done? Yeah. If we chose these resistors, R1 and R2, to be exact, their parallel combination, to be exactly equal to 10K, we would get this 999 almost back again. It's really uh, slick how it works out. It shouldn't be surprising. All right, so that's nice. Why don't we add a, uh, let's go all the way downhill. So we can add, we're going to add a offset voltage. Offset voltage, input offset voltage is 2 millivolts. Really, it's plus or minus 2. Right now, we'll just do 2 millivolts plus. Uh, this is a random variable. We have to be careful of that. Also, the input offset current uh, is good within 10%. Those input bias currents are matched within about 10%. That's uh, decent, whatever. It's low. Uh, we say good job. 5 nanoamps. Remember, this is we don't know the sign. We have to give it a sign in, uh, in SPICE, but we can also do Monte Carlo simulations, which we'll talk about later. Run the simulation again, and we have a different offset voltage. Now, if you look at this, 194 mil, uh, millivolts. That's about 200 millivolts. Let's look at that. Well, this had an input offset voltage of 2 millivolts. That will, that's exactly what we said, plus 2 millivolts. That input offset voltage shows up in series with either the minus or the plus input. It doesn't really matter. Well, 100 millivolts. Uh, we do superposition, 2 millivolts. There's a gain at, from this terminal to the output of 100, because we set it to be. Bang. 200 millivolt roughly uh, offset. All right, so we're going to take we're going to take all these back down. Our offset voltage, our uh, input bias current, and our input offset current. Make those uh, back down. We're going to focus on R in. Remember how the last assignment and simulation we got 500 mega ohms when we measured the input resistance of a non-inverting amplifier, which didn't make any sense. It should be Input resistance times the quantity 1 plus A times beta, which is a whole lot bigger. Let's simulate again. Here's our 999 back. Now, the input resistance is really the input voltage, the input current, divide those two. So the current coming into the VS source is minus 20 femtoamps. Well, that's going out, and that's what we want. So we want uh, 100 millivolts divided by 20 femtoamps, and that's the impedance looking into the inverting input or non-inverting input under feedback. Well, we punch that into the trusty TI-86. We get 5 times 10 to the 12th uh, ohms. Well, that is much bigger than 500 mega ohms. 500 mega ohms is 5 times 10 to the 8th. Well, where does those 10 to the 4 come from? Look at this. 1 plus A, beta. A was 1 million. Beta is 1 over 100, which is R1 over R1 plus R2. So 1 million divided by 100 is 1,000. And our input resistance is a thousand times, looks 1,000 times larger than the op amp itself because of the series feedback. That's great. And that's the numbers we want. They should match our hand calculations. Um, and that was all we're going to watch for today. Thanks for watching.